Hello out there in the YouTubeverse. It is Max, and we are doing Streets of New Capenna draft here on MTG Arena. It is my first draft of this set, though I've been paying attention to it first chance I've had personally to sit down and actually play with these brand new magic cards. So very exciting. So we open up one of the big boys of the set here, Jetmer, Nexus of Revels. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero. Oh, have vigilance as long as you control three or more creatures. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, and have trample as long as you control six or more creatures. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, and have double strike as long as you control nine or more creatures. So, pretty obvious what they are all about. Lagrella the Magpie, very solid, uncommon again in three colors. The briefcase, pretty cool in terms of commons. I do see a strangle down here. Now I also see a regulator, which is very good, and a jewel thief, all of which are very solid. So overall, an extremely strong pack. Um, I mean, we're gonna start with the mythic, right? It's your first outing of a new set. Of course, you want to try the cool new card out. Um, strangle won't wheel. I don't know what we're gonna get out of this set. I mean, Bray's not upstart would obviously be good for color reasons, but we'll see what we can do with opening Jetmer as our first. Pick. So let's follow it up with a mage's attendant. Let's see. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 blue wizard creature token with one sacrifices creature, counter target non creature spell unless the controller pays one. Pretty cool card. Voice of the Vermin enters the battlefield with a shield counter, which is very powerful, it means it's indestructible with that shield counter on it. Whenever Voice of Vermin attacks, target creature you control has base power 4 4 until end of turn. Very good card. I'm going to skip over the stuff that's out of color for us. I see a Glittermonger down here, which is a little expensive, but can help fix our mana. Uh, Most Wanted is okay. Again, at fixing our mana, not great. Civic Gardener, it's okay. It can help accelerate in a weird way. Um, I think it's one of these two uncommons. I think it's probably just the multiple creatures. Works really well with Jetmer. No reason not to uh, try to follow up. We want to see, ideally, if we can get into two colors and then a splash that's what i'm trying to do here let's see what we have here swamp mountain or forest so this would only get f mountain for us so not the best um hmm. let's see we have venom connoisseur whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control it gains a death touch till end of turn this is the second time this ability is resolved all creatures you control gain death touch pretty cool one one double strike it becomes a target of a spell it connives so that's pretty powerful I see Exile Target Non-Land Permanent, which is pretty good. You give them a treasure. This is two colors. I think that's what we want to be taking here. I do like Girder Goons quite a bit. Um, I think that this is probably the take, though, for us. It fixes for two colors. And I'm not just taking it because it's a rare. If that's what you're thinking. Maestro's Theater. This is Island Swamp or Mountain. Again, uh, Island Swamp not useful for us, at least as it sits. Let's see here. Obscura is Plains Island Swamp. Again, not super useful for us. Suspicious Bookcase. We've seen this one before. How suspicious. Um, nothing great in here. Antagonize. Exhibition Magician's pretty good, actually. Enters the battlefield. It can make a citizen token. So I think that's probably going to end up being the take. Again, Glittermonger's a little expensive. I do like the Regulator, but it's out of color for us. So I think it's going to be Exhibition Magician for us. And the reason being, I'm just looking for things that are making multiple creatures, right? Like, that's kind of my, that's my tiebreaker on cards. I'm not to the point yet, and I'm sure a lot of you aren't, where you're aces at evaluating cards. Obviously, some of the better limited players and some of the more commonly uh, playing limited players are. I'm not, and I'm, sh I'm sure you're probably in approximately that realm as well it's fine like it's not bad it's fine and we're just trying to figure out what works well with what we've taken so far um quick draw dagger is pretty good you can do it at instant speed and give a creature first strike when you attach it so it can kind of be a removal spell i kind of want to take ready what witty roast master as opposed to ready woast master uh just because i want to cut red if i can help it i'd like to cut a color here as much as i can green and white Fixing land, I think that's what we want to take. Gathering Throng is pretty good, especially early. We can start grabbing up Gathering Throngs and uh, putting them in the deck. That's pretty darn good. Social Climber is fine, but not great. Broken Wings we've seen many times before, and the rest of the cards really aren't for us. But I'm just going to take this Plaza. I value very much 
making sure we cast our spells. Okay, Brazen Upstart here. 4-2 Vigilance. When it dies, over the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature. Put the rest on the bottom of your library. It's in color. It's doing what we want to do. It's not the best. I almost want to take Racer's, Racer's Ring here. Oh, it's tough. Sticky Fingers is not great, but fine. Uh, it's Upstart versus Ring. Do we think that other Upstart will wheel is the question. We'll take the Upstart here. Again, we want to see what the deck can do. And we notice that uh, or we got one more pack. Next pack is be when the other Upstart would wheel. So I see Unlucky Witness. Exile the top two. You may cast them. It's not bad. One, one for one. We have the Initiate, which isn't bad. Death Touch can keep us alive that's kind of where i'm leaning it's just a two two for two it can gain death touch i don't know how good that is in this set but might be good enough gold hound here probably the take over anything else we only have that it's that versus glittermonger 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 is a little expensive and it looks like we're leaning toward red anyway so i think that's the direction we want to be it looks like right now if i had to guess mm -hmm. we're base red so that's the the spot we're at right now Let's see here. We have Most Wanted versus Revelation of Power. This isn't a great combat trick. There are better, better ones of that. Most Wanted seems a little bit more interesting, even though it's more expensive. I don't think either of those are going to make our main deck if we can help it, unless we really need to fix our colors. So as of right now, I think the deck's going... Okay, I'm not in love with it, but I don't hate it either. I think Gold Hound early is fine. It's a lot of keywords on a 1-1 there. First Strike and Menace. It's crazy. And then you can tap Sack to add a mana of any color. So that's the value for us, obviously. Swamp Mountain Forest. So this is Mountain Forest. So that's much better for us. Again, we could buy their Silence, which is pretty good. Um, I like the Unconditional Removal. It's just a non-land permanent. But I'm going to take the Fixing. Just want to... I can't emphasize enough on my first outing. I want to be able desperately to cast my spells and these cards that fix for two color like the uh the proving ground and the overlook really help me do that right like this is a red green land this is a red green land so that really helps me quite a bit with casting my spells and that's very much my concern in a set like this where i know i'm going to be probably three color and i just want to be able to cast my spell so the rare here is not for us so we're going to skip it angelic o observer is a three three flyer for six the spell costs one less for each citizen we control i know we make citizen tokens and we have two other citizens so it's a decent top end flyer i don't see a strangle I don't see... I see another Exhibition Magician. So let's read the rare since we have a few seconds here. 6-6 six, six, Trample for 4 with Ward 2. At the beginning of each combat, if it's untapped, any opponent may tap an untapped creature they control. If they do, tap it and create a fish. So it's kind of a cool card. I do not know how well to evaluate, like how strongly to evaluate that. Making unblockable, like making an army of unblockable creatures is really good, but historically leaving decisions like this in your opponent's hands is not. So I'm very up in the air on how to how to evaluate that. I see a strangle here. That's where I'm leaning. We really want interaction. We've had to pass a few times. I really like the swooping protector, but it is a two it's a two-one flash flyer. It enters the battlefield with a shield counter, so it can come in and just be an indestructible blocker for a turn. Just is really good the speakeasy server has been really good so far but uh in my observation of people playing with it so i really like that but i'm just going to take strangle here i want the cheap interaction it's at a premium i worked very hard to cut red as much as i could in the previous pack so i want to reap those rewards as much as i can so we can do forest planes off of the hideout here uh, I see two charms that are not really castable, though the the Riveteer's charm is possible, right? Like, we could get to black fairly easily. We already have it here. We already have it here. So it's a very powerful card to be taking, potentially. We could take another Exhibition Magician to go with our rare. For the Family is a decent enough trick. Um, it works well in this deck, but I think it has a high, a high probability of wheeling. Hmm. Hideout versus a charm. Huh. Let's take the hideout and be let's be disciplined and take the hideout. 
Call in a professional. Players can't gain life this turn. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Three damage to any target seems like it's right up our alley. There is a big score in this deck as or in this pack as well, which is quite good. There is a security rocks as well, which is pretty good. Um, very hard to cast cheaply, but a five four for four is not bad. We'll see if we can maybe wheel that particular card and see if anybody's interested in it. Uh, there's an ominous parcel here, but I'm just going to call in a professional. It's not. Again, we want that interaction, and we worked hard in the first pack to cut a lot of that so that we can kind of reap the benefit here. Mountain Forest Plains is exactly what we want. We want that Cabaretti Courtyard pretty badly. This is the this is the one mana combat trick, and we saw for the family. There's Luxurious Libation, which is pretty good as well. Uh, this card's really impressed me as kind of like a like frustration pass, and then the you can kind of blow the opponent out. This is the Voice of the Vermin I still like a lot, but... I just want to cast my spells, honestly. And I know it sounds like it's ridiculous. It's just like, oh my god, we get it. We, you want to cast your spells, we get it. But I promise you that it is such a big deal. Turn up the three target creature card with, with total mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, which isn't bad. Like, we have a lot of cheap creatures. So it's not a bad choice for us, but I think I'm going to take the server and just try to secure my top end. I do want to value cheaper creatures as much as I can because I want to be able to get creatures on the board to work with Jetmer. But it's not like... I, you don't want to go... All, like Jetmer is a good card. It is a mythic, and it clearly does a lot. However, I don't want to go in on the whole deck being built around Jetmer. Jetmer already rewards me for drafting a good deck and drafting properly by drafting and putting an emphasis on creatures. I'm going to draft properly as best I can. And again, my tiebreakers are going to be when I can make tokens or when a creature makes a token itself or it makes a copy. That's going to be a lot of my tiebreakers. But I'm not going to go as far as to overdraft into Jetmer because what are the odds I draw Jetmer every game? You know, I mean, maybe a little higher than depending because it's arena and things get weird but overall statistically it's not that high i'm going to see jetmer all the time so i'm going to just be conservative here i'm going to take racer's ring and now one thing we don't i do want to talk about is i'm up to six land so i want to be careful about making sure that i end up with something that i can play and i think the rackish revelers is pretty good jetmer's fixer is also pretty good so it's a little rough that we had to have both of those in the same pack Hold for Ransom is also pretty decent, but oh, it's tough. We'll take Fixer because it's cheap. Um, not much here for us. Social Climber's decent, decently cheap. The trick's not very good. Wrecking Crew's big. Don't necessarily think we want like a ton of top ends, so we'll take Social Climber. Hopefully that's what I've selected because... Arena's acting a bit odd. We'll see. Yeah, I did get the social climber. Fantastic. For the family, it'll probably be the take here. Agonize is twice as much mana, where for the family, obviously, we're already working on making sure we have a lot of creatures, and it's a good good little trick here. Uh, Mass Bandits is fine enough for the board. Uh, we'll take an Ominous Parcel here. I don't mind that. I'd play one of those. Or do I want the boon? Now, I already got the For the Family. I don't think I need the boon, per se. Um, we're definitely in... I think if I... So I dropped For the Family, right? I think we're white, red, base. Ooh, Gold Town was a nice pickup. I'd play two of those. So I think we're white, red, base, with green as our splash color. I think that it's close, though. Like, obviously, we have a lot of green in our board we can play. So we'll see. Let's see what Wire Tapping does. Very cool card. Whack is good. Unfortunately, none of these cards really fit a, uh, fit what we're doing. I do see a prize fight here, which is pretty good for us. I think that'll probably end up being what we take. There's another fixer here we could take, but I think that starts to screw up our mana a little bit. So we'll just take a prize fight. But yeah, but if the, so I'm thinking now like. I think I want the interaction over the creature because they're both green cards, right? So I'm talking about my mana. That doesn't make much sense to say. I mean, we could easily be green, red, splash, white because our white's coming down late. So we'll take the prize fight, I think, here and hope we can get a couple good hits here. Let's see what the uh, soloist does here. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. For the second time, tag creatures, tag controller. Hmm, okay, that's pretty good. Light em up's really good. 
Yeah, it's really good. The Rax Revelers might wheel for us. I'm debating... Let's try the Soloist because we need creatures. I would normally take Light em Up, I think, in this position. Okay, there's a Light em Up down here. There's a, a, a Speakeasy Server. There's an Angelic Observer. Both of which are more top-end cards. And again, I'm not super mm -hmm. interested in the top-end cards. I'm more interested in the cheaper cards. I also will take the interaction fairly highly. There's a call in the professional. Ready to rumble. Pretty good. Initiate another cheap creature. This is what I'm leaning. I'm going to call in a professional. I, I, I did not take the removal in the last pack, so I'm going to take the removal this time. I think one thing I've definitely failed to do is... That's decent. That's another piece of interaction, but I think... Do I want the Glittermonger? Probably not. I think one thing I failed to do is to pick up enough cheap creatures. And again, there's still a little bit of time here. I can sneak out a couple things. Civil Servants, very nice pickup for me. Take to the Streets is good, but again, I'm already kind of in a position where I don't want to do that. It's pretty good too, Ceremonial Groundbreaker. But we're going to take the Civil Servant. Broker's Initiate. It's like, okay, it's cheap. I mean, you can't, I can't argue with that. 2-2 two, two for 2, 2-1 two, for 2. Maybe that's what we want. We're going to be playing a lot of creatures versus untapping, which like pseudo vigilance is nice and all. So I think we've shifted out of base white. I think we're green red with a white splash. I think that's how it looks to my eyes anyway. We shall see how it goes. Somebody's packed up somewhere. A little backed up, packed up. Cool avatar butts. <laughs> Great name. Um, Halo Scarab is a cheap creature. We have this guy here. What's this guy do? Oh, that's fun. He's a, he's a raccoon. That's a weird card. 1-1 one, one Flying Lifelink for 2. No, we'll take the... I'm taking the green card because I think... That's a concession to me thinking that we are green, red, splash, white. And our white's, like, fine, but not great. Right? We're 29 cards, but we have 6 land in our deck. So we have 23 playable. So this is a deck currently. This is the deck as it sits. I, I don't know as though we're going to put in much. If we get the, um, the three-color common that's in our wedge then i will take that of course and i'll make room for that it's gonna be we'll see we've worked pretty hard to make sure that we get 17 creatures six non-creatures that's pretty good our interactions a little soft to big creatures and by a little soft i mean it's not good against them it's an expensive crew pretty good trampler We'll take the Pummeler. I'm going to put it on the board for now because I don't know as though I need it. Take the Gardener here. That might make the deck. We'll see. The Initiate looks a little suspect. I don't know. We'll have to look and see what puts counters on things, etc., etc. Don't think we're going to see the three color common. I don't feel like we are fighting anybody for the wedge, but it's possible. Um, drafting the set is a little weird. Oh, that's pretty good for us. Another cheap creature. I'm happy to have it. We can see what color no one wanted. Social Climber number two. Social Climber might be the cut. It's a pretty medium three drop. We'll see the curve, though. That's what I'm super interested in is the curve here. We want to be able to cast creatures pretty regularly in this deck. And it looks like we're able to do so. Ominous Parcel looks a little weak. Social Climber does not look great to my eyes. Like, gaining life is nice and all, but it's not that big of a deal. So let's sort for creatures now. Yes, yeah, still looks decent. This curve looks decent. Uh, we could drop Ominous Parcel. I do like that it deals 4 damage. All of our 
our all of our removal is very damage based. So that could get us in a big bad way if they have a decent creature. Shield shield uh, counters are not our friend when the opponent has those. I don't think we want to cut any of the creatures. I think I'm pretty happy with the curve as it sits. So I think we're looking at a non-creature to cut potentially. We could cut an initiate. It takes a little bit of pressure off of our mana base. This is claiming we need four planes in this deck. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven white pips. Seems a little aggressive to my eyes. Just need to cut one card. Parcel helps. It does a lot, right? Like we can use it to grab mana to fix. We can use it to dunk a creature, which feels pretty good. The initiate's not great. Like we really need to put stuff on it and I don't think as though we do. I'm just taking a look now to see what we have that gives us any kind of a buff to creatures. Yeah, not much. So we'll get rid of the initiate because it looks a little soft. But that is that is the deck here. Let's take the filter off. That looks like a deck. I mean, certainly fits the bill. I know we uh, we worked really hard to make sure we can cast our spells. So I don't think we're going to have any non-games, which is the nice piece of this. I don't think we're going to have too many of those, like, oh, we lost because we didn't cast a spell games. So I'm happy about that. So let's see what we can do. Opponent gets to go first. That's a fine enough hand, certainly worth keeping. We can use the broker's hideout immediately. Um, we can grab planes with that. I think that's probably the play. And then on turn two, we gardener. And then on turn three, we roast master. And then eventually we catch up with the parcel, perhaps. Depending on what the opponent does, if the opponent doesn't pressure us in any meaningful way, then we can just simply wait on the, the gardener. If we draw another two on turn four, we can go two drop, two drop. It's not a bad play either. We'll see. See what opponent puts down. Mountain leads me to believe they're going to go aggressive, especially that into that. Yeah, so two, two right away. The debate is just do we want to play the Roast Master, have it die? I think the answer is no. I think there's very small chance that they want to trade this particular magic card for our particular magic card. So I think putting a blocker down in this instance is pretty good. Next turn, we can we can cast a, uh, a gold hound after we cast the roast master. Okay, they fix their mana a little bit. Makes sense to me. I think we're gonna roast master. Yeah, we want we have to roast master in our first main phase and then attack with the gardener. And we get a little bit of a tempo play there. We need to draw something. Land obviously not a great draw for us in this position. But I don't think we're in a bad way here. Ugh, that's rough. Our fight looks pretty soft here. Yes, yeah, that's what we did not want to draw. Parcel, we have to tap a bunch of mana to do that as removal. Um, just going to think for a second, figure out how we want to handle this. I like the attack with the Gold Hound because their, their blocks kind of stink against it. Um, I like the Gardener attacking as well, I believe. So we'll play the parcel out. Unlucky witness dies. Okay. Okay, we can play out forest as a follow-up. And we can hold there. 
I don't think we're going to prize fight anything as it sits, just because our fight is not very good. We also value our creatures in play a little bit higher. Whenever you attack with one more creatures, create that many 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature tokens. Then if you control 10 or more creatures, that's pretty good. Do we have to prize fight something? I think the answer might be yes. Them creating a bunch of citizen tokens is not very tenable for us. This way they can't attack with Unlucky Witness. They can only... Okay, they can attack with Unlucky Witness. Okay. It's going to say, uh, what? Calling a professional is a decent draw here. Probably just pop the parcel. If we pop the parcel and shoot the connoisseur, we get to save the calling a professional, which I think is a little bit better. Um, it is more. I'm trading off more damage on board. Like I, this is more damage. Obviously, four is more than three. However, I do think the the surprise element of holding it in hand versus the thing they know is always looming, there is value there. So they get to cast their five five. Jetmer's Fixer. Hmm. I think we just kind of have to sacrifice a creature here. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Didn't expect the opponent to do that. Sticky fingers. We'll get rid of that so they don't get the sticky fingers. Five here is not really anything for us. There's no lifelink involved. We're just trying to put him in a position where the speakeasy server ends the game. Good. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. One, two, three times. So the nice thing is here with the bandits, we can check them with uh, Jetmer's Fixer. Okay. Valuing the overseer very highly.
Oof. That's going to slow us down for sure. Got to think about it now. Jetmer's fixer can't kill it alone. So I think we probably just want to brazen an upstart here. Oh, it has menace as well. Mm, that's annoying. Yeah, I think we just take our lumps. Don't think there's much we can do about that. We need a good draw here. That was an okay draw. So we swing for lethal. They have to block, right? Mass Bandits gets a free block on Brazen Upstart. Mr. Ophio, Orfeo has to trade with Jetmer's Fixer. It's a rough block set of blocks for them, so I think I'm going to force them to do it. The question is, if we Jetmer's Fixer... So we have to keep one in a red back, which means that we can Jetmer's Fixer two times, which isn't as good as we want it to be. The opponent doesn't know that, though. So they get free block on with 1-1 one, one token on Brazen Upstart, or on Jetmer's Fixer. Mass Bandits blocks Brazen Upstart. So I don't think we have attacks there. I think we just have to go for the air attack here. Three blockers, three attackers. One of them has Menace. We can let by a 1-1, one, one, even if they double its power. So that's not a bad position for us to be in here. The 3-3 three, three, like, wins the game here as long as they don't have a Flyer or a Reacher. And they Blitz. Is that game for them? Depends on where they put the counters, I believe. Oh, that's the worst spot to put the counters. We already had to block that. <laughs> but I still think that's game for them. I think the Blitz gets them. Okay. okay, they blitzed it though, right? I'm going to take a look at that real quick. We are in bronze, it is worth noting, for sure. Let me view the battlefield here. Blitz, if you cast a spell for its blitz cost, when this creature dies, draw a card, sacrifice it. It doesn't get haste, though. Gains haste and, okay, I thought it gained haste. Wait, did they just cast it for five? Maybe they accidentally misclicked. That must have been what happened, was a misclick there. That sucks. <laughs> it's a crappy way to lose. So we could have sat back on the flyer a little bit longer, but I think we don't pressure them as much if we do that, where they get time to make decisions, and they can start to blow us out with that 5-5 five, five plus double power, where they couldn't abuse that as strongly. Previous. Proving Ground helping us out a lot here. I think we keep this. Is there any reason not to? The question is, do we want to play the initiate on two and then potentially stall a three? I think the answer is probably no. What does this card do? Plus three, plus three, and has at the beginning of your end step tap this creature. Equip creature doesn't then tap. <laughs> Interesting. Um, second initiate. I think that rewards us for just playing on curve, because then we can our fourth turn can be either the soloist or double initiate. Potentially. We need red mana for that to happen. Do we want a treasure token more than a citizen token? I think the answer might be yes, given our current mana situation. We could strangle the creature here, but I think we'll hold on that. Yeah, I'll block. Land here is nice.
Hmm. We can brazen upstart into strangle. We can brazen upstart into initiate. I kind of just like strangling here. Is that true? No, probably just initiate. That way, if they want to make the social climber big, they can. Hmm, interesting. I think we probably just want to kill that right away. Actually, we can attack, attack, and see what they do. Hmm, does that do anything for me, though? Not really. Problem is, my hand is super red and my mana is super not. So, I like the cheap spell. I think if we're going to tap for removal, we want to do that right away. I think I'm fine trading the upstart for the social climber. Wow. Okay, did not expect that. Thought for sure we were trading resources. That's fascinating. Do they have a way to exile my upstart? Don't mind that. Okay. Kind of like strength. I mean, this sounds weird. But I kind of like strangling the gold hound so they're stuck. But if like their whole turn is just moving boots around and attacking, I really don't care. Be perfectly honest. Soloist probably was a little bit better there. Not just for mana efficiency reasons, but probably just to get blockers off the battlefield. Yeah, like they gain a life, move the boots, and attack. It's like, I don't care. <laughs> Each opponent chooses a permanent they control that shares a type. Type with it. Each opponent chooses a permanent they control that shared a type with a sacrifice permanent. Yeah, where they sacrifice the cement shoes. Interesting. This is super close to lethal here. Going to solo his tears is pretty backbreaking for the opponent. Okay, got him. Got them Naya beats or Cabaretti beats. I think is that's right. Right. <laughs> I still haven't learned all those. I'm not good with those, to be honest with you. The first time they introduce them, I'm okay with them, right? Like, I can do the guilds from Ravnica, I can do the the uh, the shards and the wedges, but I can't, beyond that, it's like I can't remember, like, the Ikoria ones, I can't remember, I'm sure they've been done again, and I can't remember those either. <laughs> we get to go first. We have, again, one red mana, but more of a mix and we have Jetmer this time so not that I'm keeping on the back of Jetmer I don't want to give you any any bad advice don't just keep because this is in your hand keeping because we have two drop into three drop into four drop potentially I think it's just going to be Roastmaster on this next turn put a place Swamp Mountain 
into body dropper I will offer a trade for sure do we want the proving grounds we could light them up into proving grounds I don't know if it's worth probably just so we light them up we attack play the proving grounds pass I think that's fine Give ourselves Vigilance, just in case of any kind of a hasty creature. we got to watch that parcel because it can blow up Jetmer. I th Do we want to jam Jetmer? Probably not, because we want three or more creatures. Oh, this is good news. Alright, maybe we jam Jetmer then. <laughs> Soloist is a good four. Maybe we just jam Jetmer here. They have no mana. Let's see if Jetmer's any good. And again, this is no by no means enough testing to verify if it's any good or not. But it was our pack one pick one, so it's worth. This is kind of the, this is it, right? Like this is the premier thing we were trying to do here. Let's see here. Enchanted creature loses all abilities. It's green and white citizen. And it's named legitimate business person. And they strike. Wow, there's a lot going on that turn. So we can civil serve it into nothing. So we're just going to soloist here. I'm going to get the legitimate business person beatdowns. I don't know if there's much we can do to deal with the witness protection. But I still feel it was fine to play there. Play Jetmer. Okay, so reading it would be great. Whenever it attacks, if you don't control a devil, create a devil. Okay. Oh, it has death touch, right? I forgot about that. That's on me. Um... We have planes, forest, we're good on a lot of this. Planes, planes. I think we want planes here. We'll roast master and see if we can get over our uh, F up there. Yeah, because I, I totally forgot I had death touch until I blocked. I was like, oh yeah, it's got death touch, doesn't it? It's an uncommon, I believe. Oh, it's a rare, so yeah, it definitely should have that. No blocks this time. It's kind of doing nothing now, which is nice. Does this tap for green? Yes, it does. I think we can attack here without too much of a hitch. They can block and then shoot it, which is kind of fine. Wonder why it's giving me a stop here. Oh, I have the racers ring. Okay, like why are you giving me a stop? Okay. I think we're just gonna play one mana spell here, or one spell here. I think they may have an answer here. What did we lose here? Interesting they didn't mill themselves. Could have probably blocked the devil again considering, but the the one four here into girder goons is pretty good. Just trade here. That will be game. 
I've kind of had enough. I've punted enough this game. Thank you very much. And I don't recommend just scooping because, you know what I mean, like you made some play mistakes and stuff. But at this point, we're buried. We have no cards in hand. Opponent has many. Not a great example, I will admit, of sticking with it to try to run things out. But at that point, I've punted multiple times because of my failure to comprehend words. So I think it's just is what it is. Opponent can have it. And that that match is going to take forever if they're on Grixis to, for them to grind out a win. And I just don't feel like running through all that. Swamp Mountain Forest. We have double mountain. We can get to forest. We're, this is stranded, but I think it's fine on the draw. I mean, it's there's enough going on here. It's early. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll play that first, and then we'll focus on trying to get to the Civil Servant eventually. One, two, menace. When it attacks, target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Is this is the direction we want to go. We definitely want forest. Not going to block, so we are trading one damage for two, and it is what it is. Take it to two. If we draw planes, we're in great shape. We can sacrifice the gold hound, which is probably the direction we go in to get a more powerful card on the board. Let's see what this does. That is rough. That is rough. Okay, so what can we do? If we don't sack the gold hound, we can blow up the the patrol. But then we kind of start to get buried. We can play out the soloist, but that seems like a waste of the gold hound. Mage's attendant seems pretty good. Requires sacking the gold hound. But let's go that direction. Let's try it out. That's what we're here for. The ascendancy is going to be hard to beat for sure. One on the bottom, okay. Let's see if they choose to interact here. Plane's still one of the best draws. Um, any other land is fine. It puts us on soloist, so land's fine here. Um... We have to call on a professional if we need it. Sure. Parcels down. Okay. Probably the worst land draw in the deck, but... Okay, interesting. Makes me want to light him up versus call in a professional, but we'll end the turn shoot at the end of the opponent's turn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Looking back at the draft, I think I should have taken these a little bit higher than I did. Both times could have sniped them, but I did not. With only five to cast. They're not that untenable. Five three is decent. I can't imagine they're not casting this here. Wow. 
interesting that they valued that so highly. So they have one mana available. Do I just wait and light it up? I think the answer might be yeah. If we draw planes, that's an insanely good turn of events for us. If we don't draw planes, things get worse because we're stuck on mana. I think we want to call in a professional, but then we don't have an answer to the Rakish Revelers, and that's problematic. So I think we have to play for the higher upside. Wow. Better lucky than good, as they say in the business. Hmm. See if we can try to battle back against this ascendancy. Yeah, it's just putting cards in their hand like crazy. Our draws have been good. I can't gripe about that. Obviously, playing against a rare is a little tougher. They're definitely consistent with attacking with that. I like it. If you're not going to block with it, get the points in, right? Wow, still not casting the... Being of combat on your turn, if you control two or more multicolored permanents, it gains double strike. I think we just want to put down a couple of critters. It's been so backfooted on mana, it's been very tough. I don't think we're going to fight through this whole entire thing, and I really want to double spell here. But getting this down, they're going to double spell. They have one, they have one multicolored permanent. So they're going to go to two multicolored permanents. So I think we probably... Well, no, we can call in a professional against it. So I think we just play this and make it look like we're going to give Death Touch. This card's kind of done its work, so any extra it can do is great. Hope they can whiff on this one here. It would be great. Damn. Okay. On top's not great for us. It means it's something decent. Really kind of sucks. They have to mostly tap out for this. And the green and white citizen creature token I didn't take into account. Free blocks, I understand. I think we're going to Jetmer and the... No, we could Sizzling Link Solos. I want a double spell, is the thing, and I just haven't had an opportunity to do so. Didn't get rid of the Citizen. I think Jetmer's less valuable than the Soloist is, oddly enough. They can parcel away Jetmer. That doesn't put them in a great position unless they draw fairly well. Question is if they don't parcel and they attack with Revelers, do I trade Jetmer? Probably not. Wow, they used a card out of their hand as opposed to the parcels. Really interesting. And that card could have dealt one more damage. I feel like that's a bit of a misplay. 100% blocking this. Whew, st 
still cannot double spell. I don't. Well, that's not true. That is not true. I'm gonna just play the soloist because next turn I can play all three creatures out of my hand. I just gotta hope that opponent doesn't draw something insane. So far, they're not. Their ascendancies have been fairly weak. They've pushed a lot of cards. Okay. It's pretty good. Do I want a gold hound here? Yeah. Just get a free attack in. Probably should have taken Forest there, but we'll see what the Ascendancy can do for him. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> wow. That was a hell of a draw. The Initiate has to attack, does it not? I guess not. Exhibition Magician. That may be the game, right? the perfect draw. Yeah, that's it. Wow. My opponent's going to waste time. I don't understand the wasting of the time thing. It's like, it's your time too. Like, yes, I saw you had a parcel on board that you clearly misplayed. <laughs> Like, and that's why I say they misplayed it, right? Like, why'd you use the card out of your hand? That They died with that parcel out, right? Crazy to me. It happens. That misplays happen. I punted the hell out of the last game, so I can't say too, too much. But remember, you're going to, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have play issues. There's going to be errors. There's going to be problems, et cetera, et cetera. It's a new set. Forgive yourself for your mistakes, right? Like, I was upset I did what I did, moved on from it, tried to win the next one. That's all you do. That's how it works. We're all going to make pl more play errors than normal. All right, so this is Forest Mountain. This is Forest Plains. So I think we have to go Plains here? We can't cast Fixer. I think we have to go planes on that hideout. I'm just debating too. I could play the proving ground on one and wait on the hideout. Because worst case, if I draw a no land or a tap land, I can just if I draw an untap land, I get the option to play a two on two. Yeah, I think I do that. Okay, so we do have the second source, so I think we probably just want a Jetmer's Fixer here, I think, is probably the best. Although Socialite's pretty good while we're playing a bunch of uh, tap lands and such. Okay. 
and we can still make our twos. That's why this is so valuable here, because we're going to be able to 3-2 them, 3-2 them a couple of times. And I kind of don't care if it trades, because it's not a super valuable creature to me. And I, I may not be playing Cabaretti the right way. I may, I may, it may be the case that I should be valuing my creatures more highly than I am. But just in a traditional sense of the game, this is generally I'm more comfortable playing this way. I'm going to do this, I think, here. I think Fixer is probably the next play. Yeah, I'm not sad about that. The next turn we can Mage's Attendant and attack. I think we want to do that before combat. Oh, you definitely want to kill that Jetmer's Fixer. <laughs> That's not a bad card. But he's fine 2-2 two, two for 2. Two colors makes it a little untenable, but... don't know how I feel about this 1-1 one, one for 1 with lifelink. I can tell you, I, I, it cost 2 is the thing. I don't know how I feel about that card. <laughs> Midnight Assassin Flying Death Touch. Um, I no longer know what I need now. Plains. I think we want forest. I think. I do think we want to play this creature out and be mana efficient. And I think we swing both. They may trade with their death touch creature. It's a fine trade for me. We're going to have to play around this card eventually. Trade two mana for three. Seems like a fair deal. Fair deal for the opponent as well. They preserve a lot of life. Probably Goldhound into Observer on this next turn, depending on what opponent does here. We shall see. See, they may have a removal spell here. Hovering over Jetmer's Fixer still. If they have a four-cost spell that's a not a, that's not a creature, it would behoove them to cast it this turn. They don't know I'm fixing to tap out on the next turn, but if I draw a land, I'm not necessarily fixing to tap out on the next turn either. Put it deep in the tank. That was a an interesting time to rope here. I mean, right now we see blue, white, red, black, and green. Is it the whole thing, <laughs> and then we have three colors here. So I mean, opponent just going the deepest. Oh, each citizen. So never mind. We're not going to double up on that. I thought it was creature. New set, new set. Like I said, we can go soloist into gold hound. This feels like something like just like a knockout blow or something like that. Yeah, we'll play the soloist here. Could just be a counter spell. I'm not really sure. Just continue to be as mana efficient as I can. No blocks for you. So if their plan was to block and pump, this kind of shuts that down. If their plan is just like a knockout blow or something, then so be it. Uh, no reason to knock it all three in here. If it's a flash creature, that's a little annoying. Could be the flash with a shield counter on it. Needs to just eat our mage's attendant. Just fine. We kind of know that's coming. We've, we've accepted our fate by making this attack, basically. Charm. Five damage to target creature. Okay, they're just, you know what? F that guy. Not even in a turn, just mid-combat. You're like, you know what? This combat is that guy's fault. I'm killing him. <laughs> I like it. Okay, another tap land. 
a briefcase. Makes a makes a critter. Sacrifice the briefcase to add a mana, and then they can draw three cards, which is what it looks like they're fixing to do here. I'm kind of fine trading wizard, honestly. Seven damage coming in. Pressures our life total in a pretty extreme way. Next turn we get to, I mean, and the second main phase we get to Celebrity Fencer. Hold up the wizard if they don't kill it. I don't want a Jetmer, I don't believe. We don't have any treasure to use outside of the Gold Hound. So it would just be a temporary 1-1. One, one. So one extra damage really isn't doing a whole lot here. And a block gold, double block Gold Hound. Interesting. Okay, see what opponents got rocking here. I mean, that's a big cost to play that briefcase here if they're just going to crack it for cards. It's just a masked bandits, not a big deal. Strangle's not bad here. So we get that. I think we have to just kind of consign ourselves to the fact that Mass Bandits is going to two for one us, just kind of the way it is. We'll just clear the opponent's board here. Seems pretty good. Point is futzing about in the graveyard, it seems. To opponent. It's obviously not a wrath, or they would have just done it, right? Like, that's a non decision. Maybe they're just mad. Saying that that's immediately where my mind goes about the opponents in this game. Like, maybe they're just mad. I can't imagine that be the case. They would at least draw five, at least draw three cards. But what card gets you out of that for two to three mana? You know. Not so much a thing that I have, opponent. And they can sack the sea. I was gonna say they could sack it for a treasure. Removal spell here is decent. Kill attendant or fixer more likely, because fixer can not can trade for the larcenist. 
Yes, yeah, that's the problem is you farted around a little too long on that decision. Yeah, it's just like it sucks, but you really spent way too much time trying to make it like come up with a line there. But you gotta play you gotta play with respect to your time in this game, at least to an extent. Like that well, there's just like I don't understand precisely what made them think that hard. It seemed like a fairly obvious line of cast. And they could have had just connection issues too. Like I don't want to understate that. Connection issues are absolutely a thing, but you got to play efficiently. Even if you're a newer player, that's one of the punishing things about Arena is you do tend to have to play efficiently with your time or you will get kind of get kind of hit. Let's see. We get to go first. Our hand is not stellar. The gold hound really is kind of tying the whole room together. I'm going to try it, but this could just be a pretty big punt. We have the gold hound to get a creature down if we need it. 04. Okay. Plains is probably the worst land to draw in the deck, I want to guess. This card doesn't do anything until we have five mana. Okay. Something to play. I won't argue with it. Now's where we're going to start to need our mana, though. Why did they give this thing first strike and menace? What a ridiculous card. I think as long as I have a playable, I should be attacking here. So I'll just keep dealing one. I don't think opponent's going to block this and trade their overseer for it. Yeah, it's like a terrible trade. Any untapped mana here is good for me. I'll take it. Anything gets forest? Does this get forest? Yes, it does. I think we just want to play this. No attacks. I don't think that's... I do think that's correct. We could have maybe attacked in the first main and gone initiate plus Roast Master and just been like, alright, Roast Master's trading for Fencer. It is what it is. But I don't know if that's correct. Echo Inspector is going to be a problem. If they can eye for the plus one, plus one counters particularly. I can't imagine they don't in this position, right? They put in the bin. Fake your own death. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's not really a big, big deal for us. Hmm. I think we should play Jetmer's Fixer here. I don't love a stalled board, but I don't hate a stalled board either when we have cards like uh, Jetmer in our deck. It's kind of just, like, what does Witness Protection there do precisely? Like, why not just play the Girder Goons? Like, I'm not precisely sure what we're doing here. they trample no that's really weird
opponent seems to be in the tank about like this is what I mean about the inefficiency you, like this isn't a hard decision you're either blocking or taking the damage like this isn't really too tricky two or greater we could get rid of the fixer to clear two of our opponent's cards Maybe we want a gardener in to light him up. Wait, did I do that wrong? I'm just gonna have faith I did it right. That's gonna be tough. I mean, we have to fight that down, but it's like, it's rough. I'd prefer to fight here, so that means I can't block, it means we take 10. Just don't see a way around this, unfortunately. Man, inefficiency with man is not helping me. Though I do get to cast the fencer here. What the hell's this do? Okay, that's really not doing much then for me. I think we just block with our fencer. The hope here is that Jetmer's fixer could win us the game somehow. I don't really see that happening, but... I don't see that being the card we need to do it. Yeah, it's not really going to do it. Uh, don't do it. Not much we could do there. Kind of buried by the, the celebrity fencer. Just came down and kind of just owned us a little bit. And it might have been, might have been my fault for not valuing it enough. But hard to say. Again, new cards. You don't know how strong they are, right? You don't know what's great, what's not. It's the tough part. see what we can do. Opponent goes first. This gets mountain, so our mana looks good. In case that upstart on three. Mountain. I always want to pick the ones farthest away from the other one so I don't accidentally click. Sky Crier is fine. I think we're just playing Jetmer's Fixer here. We're going to be mana efficient. I think Witty on two, on three is going to happen before Brazen. And I think we're going to wait to, to Jetmer. Although, yeah, Mountain's where we're stuck at the moment. So. Okay. Mountains where we're stuck no longer. Hmm. I think we stick to the plan. Okay. I have this very witty roast master. Creatures come into play, he says jokes, and you feel bad about it. Okay, I was waiting for somebody to play a counter spell. Okay, copy it. I got it. Okay. This is fairly straightforward upstart into Goldhound. No attacks. 
no reason to. I'd rather just break the shield there with the gold hound, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to be mana efficient and play two creatures this turn. And use Jetmer as my last card. to fill up their hand this turn. What does this do? Okay. Okay. So our creatures are getting plus two, plus zero. So four, five, six, seven, uh, 11, 11 and 6, 11 and 6 is 17, okay, okay, just 4, 2, we could just trade off Exhibition Magician for that, what does this do, okay, okay, No. I'll take it. I'm just going to strangle this now. They know it exists in my hand. The Sky Crier is not going to get there. 2-2 two, two on the ground. Like... They can deal with Jetmer, but then they still have to deal with all the creatures it left behind. Okay, sounds good. Hmm, interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was a race. Good lord. Opponent is not happy, I can tell you that. I would not be happy in that position. I'd be pissed. I'm like, fucking Jetmer. Opponent plays Mythic Rare, wins the game. You know, I'd be pissed. <laughs> next turn we're just going to play the initiate and then we'll start looking to play maybe other things down the line here hmm. we'll change tactic here the expendable lackey will get to hit us this turn but that's fine if we draw mountain we're in pretty like in a pretty good way for this next turn a very good card. Okay. So I'm just going to play this. Okay. 
Wow, okay. That was very quick to trade their shield. I didn't think that was going to happen at all. Kind of lucky for us, actually. Now we can call in a professional and take it out. So that's good news for us, for sure. Discard a card. I think it's time for Gold Hound to go. Looks like to my eyes they're holding up. They didn't attack, right? Like that's and they're holding up two mana. So a lot could go wrong here. That or they're misinterpreting what the Wing Shield agent does, which is possible in bronze. I doubt it based on his opponent's mana base, considering they've uh, upgraded to the fancy lands and such. But that doesn't mean anything, right? Like they have sleeves, they have fancy lands, means they spent money on arena. Enters the battlefield. Okay, so that's all it's done. My turn. We want planes. Again, I don't want to accidentally misclick here. Okay, planes. Lead on a gold hound. See what they do. They're holding up a lot of mana every turn here. I think we're fine to hold. We're not getting hit. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm not getting hit by anything. Like, I'm just interested to see. Like, they're really going to draw a card here? Wow. Okay, now I'll take the time to get the creature off the board. <laughs> Let them go shields down here for a minute. So are they just heavy on land then? Is that what that, that play tells us? The answer is probably that's what's going on there for opponent. Okay, they're going to do a little conniving. I'm just going to attack with the Gold Hound here. It's a hard card for them to block this turn. Uh, I think I kind of want to hold... Mm, they attack the hand, though. I don't necessarily want to put myself in a position where they're going to attack my hand and lose that. So now the, the onus is on them to try to deal with Jatmer. And they have a Girder Goons that they're blitzing, it looks like. Could not care less about that. best block she could have done. <laughs> I mean, it's not set in stone, but that's the best for me. I mean, I'll be mana efficient and take the Celebrity Fencer, but I'll hold the forest back for now because I don't need to play it. fine, yeah. Darn.
Hmm. Six or more creatures, huh? Probably just trading off the token is my guess here. Yep. Curious if they're going to draw a card. They can draw a card and use their lackey this turn if they don't have anything better to do. That's hybrid mana, I think, to activate. Yeah, that's totally fine. It's not, like, amazing for me, but it's not horrible for me either. It's not a disaster. Offer them either the double block on the fencer or the block block on magician plus token. It definitely benefits me with opponent having a few more resources in hand to keep their board resources light. So I want to keep as much pressure as I can on this opponent. Is it like a fake your own death or something? No. Draw on the card. That's what we figured they were up to, so that's okay. They got their white. That might have been what they were waiting for here. Might see like, make a fish, play the uh, speakeasy. Gain a couple life. Blocks become a bit of a nightmare. Apologies for bashing the desk with my water bottle. And for the dog. If you're not familiar, we do stream every Sunday. And you can hear Ellie and see Ellie in person on the Ellie cam. So do check that out Sunday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash superliminalfilms. Nothing. Just nothing. Okay. I guess I bite on this. We know they could at least make a fish, right? I guess I bite here, right? Like, I don't put Jetmer at risk of getting, like, a knockout blow or something. But I'll bite on the... Does Mega Fish instant speed? That's fine. Might as well click on it, right? Oh, only as a sorcery. Okay, that's what I, I... Most of those abilities are only at sorcery, so I did take that for granted. But maybe opponent messed that up as well. They keep hovering over it. It could be that they're exiling something. I'm not sure. Hopefully they didn't make too big a mistake there and do what I like thought that it was instant speed when it's not typically anymore. That's a lot of sorcery speed business making a creature. So hopefully they didn't do that. Sure. They can give life link. Okay. 
A little dangerous of a position because they could catch our hand. What does this do? That's flash. Okay. I was very confused. So it can like kind of push a spell back. It's interesting. Wow, they just go rare into rare, huh? Rare into rare into uncommon. Jesus. Okay, what can you do? Make a fish, draw a card. Oh, they're holding our Jetmer for ransom. needed though I mean like I could have just speak easy <laughs> like, wouldn't have been that bad would have bought him a card but that ended it on the spot instead of giving them a card I'm fine with that they were in a precarious spot they drew a ton of cards that game too so if you can't deal with Jetmer super oppressive apparently That's why you take the, the rares and the mythics, right? You just don't get that many chances to play with them in limited. So evaluating them is really good. And of course, can't push uh, a resource like 17 lands hard enough. Definitely a great thing to utilize if you get the chance to. It's very it's it's free, it's easy, keeps track of your specifics. It's pretty good. Puddin' head, like the artist puddin' head. We get to go first. Mantle situation looks good. So I think we just keep, we probably play, probably, do we want Goldhound on one is the question. I think the answer is probably not with the Socialite. So I think we just play the Proving Grounds on one. There's some debate over whether we hold that up. This is, okay, so we don't have a planes for that, so. Social it is. Back streets back, all right. I think we want treasure here. Willing to offer a trade here if they want to trade backstreet for socialite. Do they want to trade yet? <laughs> Answer seems to be yes.
backup agent. Where do you put it? That's tough. Yeah, I think that's correct. So we can light up the the veteran. When they go to put the shield on, we could f prize fight the backup agent. We could just light up via the exhibition magician. Oh crap, I did it wrong. I was afraid of that. I'm gonna have to prize fight shit. I get rid of like my whole board to do this is really dumb. It happens again. That's what this. That's what learning the format's all about. But that definitely puts us in a bad spot. I'm putting up a ton of cards on us now. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. It was my fault for not thinking the stack through. I think. We'll attack first. See what happens. And they certainly have something because it's holding priority. Look at the top two cards of your library, one of them in hand, the other in the bottom. He's sure. Good if you have a just like a token to block and then sack. Be pretty gnarly. We're just gonna roast here. Which I didn't realize was a citizen. <laughs> That's two thus far shooter on punts this game. It happens. Opponent's just doing nothing a lot. Freaking me out, man. Forest, forest. I think we want the first planes, obvious. Um, yeah, I think we got a combat. I don't think there's a reason to use the roast master to gain life. So this is probably a citizen. It's an advisor. You know, the very common advisor. Do we want to call in a professional? efficient here. Nothing again. Again, I don't see any reason to not do this. Just because, I mean, if their mana is back, yes. But, okay, they block. They do a pump on the civil servant. They, like, kill shot. Okay, opponent, this is what I have. This is what I'm presenting to you. What say you? Hmm. 
nothing again. See any reason to struggle here or strangle, excuse me. Yeah, I think we just get in there. <laughs> Is this this? There's a shaman. Mm, shaman. Yeah. That's cool with me. It goes to one. I mean, the term with four creatures on the board. What does that do? Whenever you discard a card, target creature an opponent controls gets minus X minus O. Are you a citizen? No. Okay. Like, this is a cool card, but I'm just going to attack around it. <laughs> All right. Cool. We got to claim a prize. Love it. Got there with the seven wins. Excellent. So, that's that's my first outing. You were with me during it. That's my first outing. The the struggles, the anger, <laughs> the, the regret, and the victory. So hope this helps you a little bit, kind of helping you work your way through your decisions again. Check out 17 Lands if you need a little bit more help kind of evaluating cards. It's a great resource, a shared community that helps kind of gain statistics and evaluate data. So definitely check that out. Check us out here every Thursday, and we will see you next time with another video. And remember, I always say this, until next time, you got, you got, you gotta cast more spells. Bye.